Greetings and welcome back to room 303 and Junior English. And we turn now in your hymnals to Denise Levertov. An introduction is there for you on 1338 of your hymnal. We'll be looking at her, The Secret, on 1339. Read with me really quickly, starting with biographic information on 1338 and the dates of 1923 to 1997. Born in England, Denise Levertov grew up wandering the parks and museums of London and reveling in her family's private library. By the age of five, she had decided to become a writer, and by 17, she had published her first poem. Her collection, The Double Image, appeared in 1946, earning the poet recognition in both England and the United States. The next heading is Becoming American. After serving as a civilian nurse in London during World War II, Levertov married an American writer and moved to the United States. There she developed a close friendship with the poet William Carlos Williams, a poet that we've already studied, and studied the works of Emerson and Thoreau. From these writers, Levertov learned to pay deep attention to the realities of life, both large and small. When she came to the United States, Levertov became part of a loosely organized group known as the Black Mountain Poets. You can Google this if you're interested. These writers rejected poetic tradition and embraced a conversational style of writing. In her poem, The Man, Levertov expresses the force of individualism the Black Mountain Poets sought. Quote, you pick out your own song from the uproar, line by line, and at last throw back your head and sing it, end quote. Sounds like something Whitman could have written as well, right? Although her poems cover a broad range of topics from love to art to politics and war, they're all characterized by a clear, direct voice and a profound reverence for the mystery at the heart of existence. Levertov published more than 20 volumes of poetry during her lifetime, including the award-winning The Freeing of the Dust. And then the final quote, celebration of mystery probably constitutes the most consistent theme of my poetry, end quote. Therefore, it is significant that the title of this poem is The Secret. Let's go ahead and just read this poem to get a sense of her conversational style. At 2B, though, write this down. All I want you to write down at 2B is this, line break, line break. Okay? So, for example, just, just look at the opening lines. Two girls discover, and then that's the first line. The secret of life is the second line. In a sudden line of, that's the third line, poetry. Right? That's the fourth line. But when you read this, you have to read it as one thought. Two girls discover the secret of life in a sudden line of poetry. Do you got me? Everybody with me? Let's go ahead now and just read the entire poem and enjoy the ways Levertov plays with language. Let's see how well you understand this poem. Watch it. The Secret by Denise Levertov. Two girls discover the secret of life in a sudden line of poetry. I, who don't know the secret, wrote the line. They told me, through a third person, they had found it, but not what it was, not even what line it was. No doubt by now, more than a week later, they have forgotten the secret, the line, the name of the poem. I love them for finding what I can't find, and for loving <coughs> me for the line I wrote, and for forgetting it, so that a thousand times till death finds them, they may discover it again, in other lines, in other happenings, and for wanting to know it, for assuming there is such a secret, yes, for that most of all. Okay, so it's a simple little poem, but it seems to me that a lot of my junior readers have found this a really remarkable little poem once we get into understanding what the point of the poem is. First, let's work at level one. Very simple. Two things happen. One, she has written a poem that has been read by a couple of girls who then write back to her and say, whoa, the poem that you wrote just divulged some kind of secret to us. We might say insight. Good way to say it, right? When the girls wrote to her, they're not very sophisticated readers. So for example, they don't even tell her what poem it was, what line it was, what secret it was. She is able to infer from the letter that the readers of her poem are probably very young and immature. The second part of the poem at level one, she speculates on these girls and she points out that no doubt by now, I'm with you on, on page 1340, uh, line 1415, uh, no doubt, uh, 13, 14, 15, no doubt by now, 
More than a week later, the girls have forgotten the secret, the line, the name of the poem. In other words, they read it. It moved them. They were kind of blown away by it. So much so that they sat down and wanted to write the, the poet and say, great poem, so amazing. But she speculates, probably by now, they've totally forgotten everything about the poem and the experience of finding the quote-unquote secret. I love them for finding what I can't find. And for loving me. For the line I wrote. And for forgetting it. So notice she begins to kind of think about what it means to be a writer. What it means to be an artist. You create something. People see it. Read it. Hear it. They're moved by it for a while. And then they forget it. And she says, I love the fact that I was able to write something that moved somebody, especially a couple of young girls. But she says, I also love the fact they've totally forgotten about it already. Why? Keep reading. She says, I love, she says, them for finding what I can't find and for loving me, for the line I wrote and for forgetting it, so that a thousand times till death finds them. They may, the girls, discover it, the secret, again in other lines, in other happenings. And for wanting to know it, for assuming there is such a secret, yes, for that, most of all. What is she saying at the end of the poem at level one? Jot down what you think she's saying. She's saying something really interesting about what it means to be alive. She says, I love that I know that there's a couple of girls out there who in their lifetime are going to experience things over and over again that will move them in some way. Now we have said before, of course, in 303 that the major difference between you and a fly is you know about fly swatters. But that's an interesting observation once you ask this question, how do you know about fly swatters? Of course, what we're really talking about is you're only at the park for a short period and then you have to go bye-bye. That's what they were teaching you when you were young. But question, how did you learn that? Answer, any number of ways. Obviously, one way is death itself. People you love, your first goldfish you had to flush down the toilet after it died. All of that, of course, is the experience of death. But there's another way that we experience this thing called life and death and the majesty of both. And, of course, it's through art. It's through the experience, right, of meeting a text, engaging in that text, and once you've done it once, that is to say, once you've discovered the secret, you kind of have a tendency to want to go back to it again and again and again. See, we could jump to 3B really quickly and ask this question. Of the thousands, if not more, of songs that you have on your playlist, why are they there and not other songs? That is a very interesting question. Why? Why do you have certain songs that you keep coming back to over and over again? Oh, no, 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 no. Don't play that seventh grade game with me because I like it, dude. No, no, no. We know that you like it, but you're a sophisticated student now as, an, as a junior in high school. So you have to ask a legitimate question. Why are you attracted to some works of art, but not to other works of art? Why is there a movie, for example, that you have seen? See, this is a 3A question. Why is there a movie that you have seen that you wanted your friends to watch? Why is there a video you've experienced and your first thought was, I want you to take a look at this. Why is it that you've stumbled across something, for example, on Face Filth or other, or other places, and you wanted to share that with someone? Notice, it's a secret, that is to say an insight, that you want to share with someone. Art, of course, has that power. At 2A, then, for messages and themes, we could jot down several, couldn't we? One, obviously, we could be talking about the power of art to help us qualify the existence that we live. We could also say that a major theme or message of this poem is to talk about the significance of finding one work with which you can connect. One song, one movie, one poem, one short story, one novel. All you need is one experience of art, one amazing painting. Notice, for example, on page 1339 that they give you the Pablo Picasso painting, Two Girls Reading. Of course, this painting alone, some of my students have looked at it and said, I want to see more paintings by this Picasso guy. And then they go online and they Google image this, 
this um, artist and they're stunned at the variety of the artwork of this genius artist, Picasso. They maybe heard the name, but they never before really looked very closely at, the, at his paintings. Of course, notice the other major message has to do with the artist herself, Denise Levertov, who says, I'm so pleased that I was able to produce something that moves someone in your life. We would maybe say, once in your life, you can only hope that you have this experience of doing or saying or creating something that moves somebody else, that leads them to say, whoa, that was important, what you just said or what you just did or what you just created, really important. Of course, at 2B, we have already pointed out this interesting thing about the line break. Notice how the poem forces you to have to kind of back up and read again. We think of E.E. E. Cummings when we read a poem like this, where at first it might be a little bit confusing to pick the poem up, especially the second stanza. I, there should be a comma there, right? Who don't know the secret, comma, wrote the line. But notice it's all run together, so you have to kind of read it several times to be able to get it. The power, of course, is in this revealing of the insight or the secret without her knowing exactly what that is. Let's jump to level three. How can we relate to a text like this? Well, we've already been gesturing in that direction. Let's do it now formally. At 3.1, we want to relate to other titles, to other texts. We can ask this question, what is the text for you at 3.8 that for you contains the quote-unquote secret? The insight. If it's a song, for example, write down the title really quickly. What is the first song you ever remember having in your playlist? And it probably happened for you when you were in middle school, maybe early high school, when you realized that was a really important song for you. Maybe it had to do with the music, maybe it had to do with the words, maybe it had to do with something both, maybe it had to do with the artist himself, herself, right? Who is the artist for you that has revealed a secret? Of course, it's always an interesting question to ask, is the artist alive? And if the artist is still alive, have you tried to reach out to the artist and say thank you to the musician, to the writer, to the poet, to the painter, who has moved you in some way and say thank you, like these two girls in this poem did? Of course, we can ask this question, do you have a favorite movie that celebrates the power of reading. That, for example, in the process of reading, something crazy happens, something imaginative happens. A junior student once reporting, there's that amazing film where the little boy is reading and then all of a sudden he ends up inside of the story. The way in which that kind of a film suggests reading or art in general has that power where you can kind of become part of the experience of the text itself. Of course, let's jump to 3B here really quickly to finish our conversation with this, with this title. What is for you the moment that you can remember when you understood that there are some things that can really move you? Was it a piece of music? Was it a film? Was it a video? Was it something you read? I had a junior that said, I can remember this vividly when I discovered reading in books in fifth grade and I read this book and I kept carrying it around with me after I had finished reading it. And my teacher kept asking, why do you still have that book if you finished reading it already? And the student said, I can remember saying, because it, it's important to me. Hmm. It's kind of like this. Do you remember a book that you wanted to own, not just read? Do you have a book at home right now that kind of is that for you? It may have something more to do with the volume itself than anything else. Can you finally, can you ever imagine that you would be able to create something that could move people? That's a very interesting question. If somebody were to come up to you after you've created something and say, that was amazing. I talk to ball players all the time who have an experience where they've done something really, really well. Maybe they've helped to win the game or something. And then somebody comes up to them afterwards and says, Dude, what you just did, that was incredible. How'd that make you feel? We have a sense of maybe how Denise Levertov 
uh, in this poem feels about that and the way in which you go, yeah, I did something right. That's so awesome. Well, there you go. Denise Levertov and The Secret. Thank you.